And welcome back, everybody. Last time we went to the Mun, landed, and then came back to Kerbin. Although I did use some cheats, but I wasn't teaching fuel consumption and efficiency and all that bullshit. You guys can figure that out on your own just by trial and error. I mean, there is math and stuff behind it with Delta V and fuel and ISP and all that fun crap, but we really don't need all that. I'm just gonna, this episode, show you guys how to do asparagus staging, and then some of you were a little, uh, we're still having some troubles uh, getting into a good orbit and um, also getting to the MUN, so I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on how to do that after I show and explain why asparagus staging is better. So, to begin... I'm going to use this right here, that way we don't go insanely high up in the air as I show this. But, we're going to take our center fuel tank, and put on that. That is your standard rocket. Now, in asparagus staging, here, actually I'll show you how high up we can go without asparagus staging. And we'll use tiny little rockets for this so it doesn't go up really high like I said. So we'll just go like this. And put engines on it. And then strut it so it doesn't fall apart. Now the key to asparagus staging is all five blast off at the same time. So for this we're also going to make it so all five go off at the same time. Right there. To the little fancy bolt there. And just so you guys don't slap me, I'll actually do that. Slide those up there, and there. And we'll give it some parachute -y, fancy dancy action here by putting a stack separator there to get rid of the engine and everything once we're done. And then we'll use a parachute to land. Yay! The blue guy. I like the blue one. So everything separates pretty much when it's done. Uh, we do, since those outer tanks are smaller, they're going to ditch before the center one, so, there. And launch. Now we get the awesome loading screen. Um, right after I show you guys the advantages to using asparagus and all that kind of stuff, I will be doing a little bit more on how to get into orbit, and then, um, real quickly, I'm going to show you guys getting to the MUN Alright, so, you throttle up as always, hit T to turn on the uh, SAS, T for SAS, that makes you more stable, all cockpits come with it, it does use electric charge though, see my usage jumping around like a retard, yeah, that's because it is using stabilization for some reason to keep me perfectly centered, because there's some vibration from this, it's not perfectly stable, but yes, your cockpit has built in SAS now as of version 0.21, but you can add in those inline stabilizers and everything to add more uh, torque and all that kind of control. So we throttle it up, holding shift, and hit space to release and go. And hopefully this doesn't get us too high, but it looks like it is. I am controlling my fuel consumption and everything, so we don't go up over 200 meters a second until we're above 10,000. Shouldn't be able to get above 10,000, though. I think this is, honestly, way too efficient for this test, but... Yeah, it's way too efficient. We're going way faster than 200 meters a second. But, we will still be able to see the difference between asparagus and this just uh, standard staged. This is just a standard stage here where you drop the outside, keep the inside going. Alright, now we can full throttle. And there it goes. Outsides are done, we drop that. And as you see here, set of one is still strong enough to keep us going. And we're just going straight up to get a maximum altitude, and that will give you a good idea of how much extra power asparagus staging gives us. Okay. I'll come out here to the orbit map so we can see exactly where it brings us. It looks like it's just enough for the super basic thing to get us just barely out of the atmosphere by 5,000 meters. 
I do apologize in later videos. I told you guys the 75,000 is outside in technically space. Well, technically it's 70,000 meters, but it's always nice to go up to 75 so you can do orbital maneuvers. And all that fun stuff. So, yep, we only got up 75,000. So, let's revert back to the vehicle assembly building. Now I'm going to do this all with asparagus staging. So we get rid of that, we get rid of all those. The reason why I had to get rid of those to do it is the way the uh, symmetry thing works. Is if I built all four around like that and I try to use fuel lines, it automatically snap to all fuel tanks. So what you do is if you want four external rockets, you build two sets of two. So I'm going to build one set here. Now if you notice, right now I'm aligning the uh, top brackets with the uh, line there on the side of the fuel tank. That's important, that way I can level them both off since I'm not in symmetry mode for all four. The second set I'm going to have to manually set to the same height and everything. But we're going to use that holding alt trick to um, get us everything lined up so we don't have to worry about that. Put the liquid fuels. I didn't use that one, I used this one. Bam. Okay, now I'm going to hold alt on the brackets here. And then all I have to do is line it up on that line. And I set it wrong. It needs to go right there. Bam. Now, they are by a couple millimeters off, whatever. That will throw off the rocket just a tad, but we can control it with SAS and all that fun stuff. So, click there, hold alt, so you copy and paste the whole rocket and everything, because you don't want to have it being off a little bit here, then off a little bit here. That just makes a mess of things. So, we'll get into how to organize all the staging and everything here in a second. The next thing you want to do is over in propulsion, you got these fuel lines. Make sure you're set to times two on the symmetry mode. And what you're going to do is you're going to come from this set of two, and you kind of come over to that set of two. Alright? That way, this engine is pulling fuel out of this tank, but this tank is being filled by this tank, and this engine's also pulling out of this tank. So, technically, this tank right here is feeding two engines. Once it empties, we ditch it. So then we have these two tanks that are now still filled, but at the same time, we want to grab another fuel line like that. I go on the inside here, it's easier, and bring it to the center. Now, at initial launch, all five thrusters are going. Yippee for us. That's what we want, though. All five are going, so this center engine's pulling fuel from its tank, but that tank is pulling from this tank, and this tank is pulling from that tank. It's a one, two, three setup. Okay, and then uh, you, what you want to do is you want to ditch the, the uh, tank that's not pulling out of any other tank first. That way you're ditching the extra weight as quickly as you possibly can now. In the last design we got up to 75, so we'll see what this one gets us. But we have to separate the uh, separators here. So you put your mouse over the separator that goes first, which is this one, which isn't pulling from anywhere. It's giving out all of its fuel. And it's the bottom two right here. So we hit plus and drag them down. And then we just double check to make sure the game didn't futz it up. Alright. Looks good. I'm going to reset my struts here. Now with the struts as well, you're going to have to set uh, two sets of them. One, because the game sees it as we have two separate stacks of engines. When really it's the same stack, we just did it so we could fool around with the fuel lines. But there. Just like that. Alright. And so you guys don't yell at me or anything. We also have to do these twice in a row as well. Because it's fun like that. Whatever. We'll put those up where the engines are so they decouple at the same time our engines do. And let's see how much more efficient this design is in comparison to the 
just five all at the same time rockets. And our awesome loading screen is being awesome as usual. So we just wait for that. And just wait for that. Oh, look at that. Right in here. Look at the pilots we have. Bill, Jebediah, and Bob. Three best Kerbals ever. Alright. Throttle it up full. Turned on SAS for stability. And here we go. You'll see here, these two are draining super fast. The rest say they're draining, but that's just total fuel in that entire stage, so that's to be expected. And boom, they're done, drop it, and you see all those went right back up to full because there, were no, there was no more empty space for fuel to be in. So it recalculated these meters and everything once we dropped the empty space and we were left with full rockets. And we keep going up and up and up. And yes, I am breaking a rule by going faster than 200 meters a second below 10,000. But it shouldn't matter because we're at 10,000 now anyways. So pretty much I just lost out on efficiency. So I'm not going to be able to get as high as the asparagus stage would normally get me if I followed that rule. But I'm still going to go higher than what the other one gave us. We're well... We're about 20,000 meters up and still have a half a tank of fuel. That's how efficient asparagus is. Okay. Look at that. Here, any second, you'll see the apoapsis just jump out there. <laughs> and... Beat our previous record. Same rocket, same amount of engine, same amount of fuel. It's just we did asparagus staging. In fact, the uh, fuel lines add weight. So we added weight even to the whole design and still got out to 130,000, which is pretty much double our max height, which is amazing. So that's asparagus staging. And here in a bit, I'm going to record the video for uh, me defining uh, how to get into orbit and how to get to the moon a little bit more for you guys. And then I'll be going over uh, RCS tutorial and more specific docking on Tuesday. Alright, until then, you guys have been great.